Hello everybody, I'm Jace Bravo and I'm stoked for you to be here with us. The other day my family and I, we went to Trump's for a walk um, and yes, we did stay six feet away from everyone. And upon arriving, we found that it was packed with families, more families than I've ever seen there before. I looked across the grass and I saw Catalina in the background, it was gorgeous, and every family was spread apart, you know, more than six feet from one another. And they even made sticks to make sure that people were more than six feet away from one another. Uh, but the one thing that I noticed the most was without a doubt, everyone there was at peace, and they were happy, they were at peace. And then I wanted to rewind a couple days back when I was at Costco. And I honestly don't think I need to say anything else because uh, you know pretty much what I'm going to say. It was a madhouse. It was chaotic. It was crazy. But the one thing I saw the most while there was fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what the next announcement might be with the president and his task force. What was going to happen next. Fear of being home for an extended period of time. If you told me last year that the world was going to be almost at a standstill, I would have called you crazy. We live in a world we live in, that's moving so fast. We live in one of the fastest moving countries and one of the fastest moving cities. And so being told to shelter in place, that was scary. We live in a world that compares each other on how busy we are. We live in a world where we brag about how little sleep we get because of the work we are doing or maybe uh, trying to accomplish a mundane goal. But I believe we fear Psalm 46, 11, which is be still and know that I am God. I wanted to use this confirmation lesson to focus on two parts of that verse. The first being is be still. And the second is Know that I am God. Throughout our faith journey, we are told that if we want a relationship with God, we need to talk to him or we need to pray. Whether we are 90 years old or whether we're in our teen years, we continuously are encouraged to pray. I know for me, so many times, I only pray when I needed God. Maybe if I needed him on a test that I didn't study for or pray when I was nervous about an outcome or a situation, or pray when someone close to me was ill, or maybe dying, or maybe even on their deathbed. And when I prayed, I got down on my knees, or maybe I would just lower my head and close my eyes, and I would humbly ask the king of the universe to intercede and help. You see, I'd give him maybe a few seconds or a couple minutes, and then I would just carry on. David, in giving us Psalm 46, made sure to say, be still. Be still. He did not say, do nothing or wait. He meant for our entire being, everything of who we are, to be still. To calm our hearts, to patient our wandering minds, to push away all distractions. To find this place of refuge. To simply be. As I said before, we are moving so quickly. And what I'm counting on Sunday, the 15th of March, we were told to shelter in place, to quarantine. It was at that moment that most of the world just went crazy with fear. I mean, fear of the unknown. And yet, God has been present in all of this mess. Now, let me explain that for a second. God doesn't want his children to die. God doesn't want his children, us, to suffer. He wants so much more for us. And he sent his only begotten son to stretch out his arms and his hands in pure selfless love to show us just how much he loves us. Now, with that being said, God doesn't disappear in times like this. On the contrary, God makes himself more known. We just need to be still. 
I don't know what you might be doing in the quarantine lifestyle or how busy you might be with maybe spring cleaning as my wife is calling it or others are calling it, uh, chores or work or school. But as a youth minister and uh, youth ministers are, are really good at challenging, I challenge you to take time each and every day to be still. And with that, I want to couple that with the second part of the verse. Know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. What a powerful form of prayer that David gives us. We are called in a time of turmoil, in a time of uncertainty, when the news is telling the world to stock up. We're trying to drive fear because of empty aisles in the grocery store. To be still. And know that I am God. In Rome, I had a holy priest who was our chaplain. And he walked with us in our faith journey while we studied there. One of the most powerful things, and yet one of the most confusing things, that he said before Mass one day, is he got up and he said, Receive the Eucharist without having any feeling. Receive the Eucharist without having any feeling. And I remember being so confused because all that I knew was going to like Steubenville conferences or going on retreats and in general and seeing these people with utter joy and smiles on their faces before receiving the Eucharist. And I assumed that uh, they had this epic feeling of love for the Eucharist every single time they received it. But I was wrong. Our faith, and more importantly, the Eucharist, isn't a feeling. It's a person. This psalm captures the Eucharist perfectly. We are called to know that he is God. That the little wafer-like host, the thing that smells like unleavened bread, the thing that tastes like bread, transubstantiates, changes in substance into Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity. We will spend the rest of our lives trying to understand this psalm, I believe. But you are given an odd and blessed-filled time to stay at home, to be, to be present, to be still. Use this time to know that, to know who is God, to know that he is the Lord of our lives. To know that after all the work you do, after having the perfect family, after having the perfect job, after getting all the money you need, know that after everything is all done, you will meet him. I remember in college there was a day that I was literally overwhelmed with everything I needed to get done. I woke up, I had to quickly get ready, eat and go, meet a group of guys to have a chat with. Then I needed to get a weekly paper that I worked tirelessly trying to just get one A uh, just on one of the weeks. I never got out of my chair for four hours. After that, I raced home to eat and I got changed to go to the gym with the limited free time that I had. Then I had to race back to my job then I had to race back to the library to catch up on a reading that I really pushed off and I really didn't want to do. After I went home, I ate dinner and I caught a conversation with a few guys I was living with only to go to bed early because I had an adoration hour at 3 in the morning that I signed up for. After just getting a few restless hours of sleep, I got up and I walked outside regretting choosing that hour. But when I was outside and stood on my porch overlooking the school, snow covered everything. No cars were out. The world stood still. The snow fell silently to the snow-covered floor. And if you'd ever been caught in a snowstorm, it is not like a rainstorm. Where a rainstorm, you hear the droplets, a snowstorm, even heaps of snow coming down, it catches every sound, and it's just eerily silent. I remember standing on the porch still. I remember looking everywhere, and it was eerily silent. At this moment, everything stopped. 
the whole day had just passed. The work, the distractions, everything on my mind. I remember just standing there and the first thought that went through my mind and the first words that I said was praise God. I felt like Elijah in the first book of Kings um, because I had been overlooking for some great thing to God to, uh, for God to do in my life, to show and create some sort of happiness for me. But all the while, I was simply looking for peace and only this peace that I could get from God in this silent, still snowstorm. Finally, walking into the Adoration Chapel and relieving the tired young lady whose hour was right before mine, I was before God. And I just became still before Him. This week, I want you to take, and I want you to look deeply into each and every day. Take time to just be still and figure out where is God? How is he working in this day today? Why is it so important to be still? How can we know that he is God? You are called to change the world one day. But know that sometimes we must first grow into the sons and daughters that he is calling us to be. Take this time to grow. Be happy, be healthy, be holy, and be still.